right, so here is another way in which you can control your robot using the Bluetooth and the brick buttons um, just to give you some variety in terms of how you could code. None of these are perfect, none of these are the way, but at least it's going to get you thinking about some different ways in which we can get a robot to communicate um, with other bricks. So in this case, what we've got going on here, we have we've utilized these Bluetooth bricks here. And so we have dragged up a Bluetooth connection block right here. And we've got this on initiate and we have this on number one. So number one is the name of the robot that it's going to communicate with. So this needs to be whatever the name of your robot is that you're using. Okay. Um, so in here on the receiver, I'm going to need to make some changes on my robot that I have. It's currently called EV3. So uh, I'm going to need to change that to EV3 here. Now, I've got one big continuous loop block here. And you can see that I've, I've added a switch block. And I have the switch block based on the brick buttons. And I have added all these choices in that switch block. And so the way that you do that, just so you can kind of see this in case you haven't done that before, when I have a switch, I can add more options to my code within a switch block. And the way that you do that is when you drag things in, you can actually add this plus sign is going to pop up. So let me mimic what I've got going on here. So I could add these in here. And as these start to fill out, you're going to get an addition sign that you can start to add some things to your block. So when I switch this over here to the brick buttons, you're going to see this plus sign pops up. And so you can add as many cases as you need to by hitting that plus. So that's how I was able to get those options. On this switch block, this plus sign opens up. I'm going to delete that out because we don't need that because I've got it all built in here. Um, and actually what I'm going to do here then is I have a message, a, a title message. And it's going to send on every one of these signals a different note. So you can see here that when I hit the up button on the brick, it's going to send a text message of forward. When I hit down, it's going to hit a message of back. When I go here, it's going to be to the right, left. Here is going to be a, a fire. Um, so we could actually trigger our robot to do something. In this case, um, we're not really going to need that, so maybe I'll just change this to um, um, well, let's just leave it in there for now. And then if I don't have any buttons pressed that's set to default to zero, I have this as stop. Now you notice the thing that's going to be really important, whatever you set as the default case, is what your robot's going to default to. And so it's important that this stop one is your default case. So if nothing's happening, this is what it's going to ping out, which is what's going to keep your robot from going and moving all the time. Now on my receiver code, I've got one huge loop block. I've dragged in a, another Bluetooth communication, but this time it's sent to receive. It's going to receive the text. So whatever it receives here, this forward, backward, right, left, it's then going to read that text in this switch block. And then I've got them labeled. You can see here, forward, backward, right, left. Now your spelling matters, your capitalization matters, all that matters. And whatever word it receives, it's going to do that command. So here I've got my motors going forward and backwards and to the right and to the left, that sort of thing. And so as we start to think about that, we can have all these different kind of commands in. And this will allow our robot to be controlled with brick buttons by using Bluetooth communication. So let's take a look at what this one looks like using the robot that we used in the previous video. Okay, so one of the things that I did that's important to note that in the video I was talking about the name of your robot you're communicating with. And in here you can see, hopefully, 
that I just changed the name of this robot to one. Um, in the video I had typed in EV3, but all my commands were signaling to one. And I just changed the name of this robot to one um, because one of the things I was thinking about was the fact that in our camps with 30 kids, all the robots default to EV3. So this just allows me when we're trying to do Bluetooth communication and pairing bricks up, I can easily address mine as being number one. So I'm gonna go ahead and pair these up again because I changed the name, they're not gonna be synced up. So I'm going to have to search here again. And then what's different with this one, the previous one? The previous one, the motor stayed on. And that's not going to be the case with this brick. It will default to not moving at all. So that will allow it to be a little bit easier to control. So I'm going to go ahead and get this connected here. There we go. Alright, so this one, I should now be able to control, see how it doesn't move now with the controls, I can go forward, backwards, I can go to the left, I can go right, so now I have better control of my robot, I can turn however I want which is going to make life a little bit easier for our controls. So this is just another Bluetooth brick option as you're thinking about how to code your robot to do the communication for the challenges set forth.